welcome to this week's vlog. So I told you in my wrap up, if you watch that on the other channel, that I was 200 pages into Wall of Storms. I'm now 250 pages, so I'm moving, obviously. So The Wall of Storms is the sequel to The uh, the Grace of Kings. This is book two in the Dandelion Dynasty. The Grace of Kings was in my top 10 books that I've read so far this year list, and I expected this to make it to the list as well, but because I like the UK editions better, it just takes a long time for them to come in the mail. But I finally have it in the mail, and I'm already loving it so much. The sequel starts off really, really strong. In, in The Grace of Kings, I, 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 don't I don't know how much you remember of how I felt about The Grace of Kings, but I loved it. <laughs> but it also read like a collection of short stories and there were a ton of characters to keep track of and it was just crazy times. Uh, so there was a lot of, there was a big learning curve for Kin Liu's sty writing style as a novelist. I read him as a short story writer first and loved his short stories and then uh, in a full length novel it took a lot of adjusting because he wrote The Grace of Kings very very differently from what I'm accustomed to reading. Wall of Storms is already so much stronger. I can already tell that he feels, it reads to me like he feels a lot more comfortable writing in this long form format. So we have our groups of people, we have our sections of the story, but rather than a million characters being thrown at you at once and a bunch of, you know, head hopping constantly, it feels more sectioned off, it feels more fluid, it just feels a lot more comfortable to read. And already I'm so attached to some of these characters, certain younger characters as well as some older sages that are stepping into that mentor role. I already adore. So I'm having a very, very good time. I'm already, I mean, in The Grace of Kings, I became really, really attached to characters really, really quickly, just way too fast. Within like two pages, really attached. And that's still true with The Wall of Storms, even with the writing style feeling a little bit more uh, polished for a more long form story, he still is effective at getting me really attached to a character really quickly, making me know what this character is about and what they're like within just a few pages. It's just, I'm just, oh, it's already so good. All that said, I'm gonna have to put it on hold now <laughs> because, or slow down with it, I suppose, because um, Secret Project 3 just came out. So I would just try to balance them because I have this one physically and I backed the Kickstarter for the ebook and the audiobook so I can do one digitally and one physically but the problem is that I'm also currently reading Malazan, The Bone Hunters Part 3 which I'm already a chunk into and I'm not putting that down so I have three books <laughs> that are trying to balance that I really really like all of them so you see my problem. Anyway, I'm still gonna keep reading both Bone Hunters and Wall of Storms. I'm just gonna have to slow both of them down so that I can also get into Secret Project. That said, Secret Project 3, I've already finished part one. Don't worry, you're good in this vlog. I'll actually, I'll put my calendar for the month up there. I like to do a uh, upload calendar just so you know what kind of videos to expect from me for the month. And this month, on Tuesday, I'm going to have the spoiler video for uh, Secret Project on Tuesday. And then uh, next week, I'm also going to have a video where I'm talking about three new releases that I'm reading really close together. And they're getting a video over on the other channel because I try to bring a reading vlog to the other channel at least once a month, a themed vlog. So that's what I'm doing there. So that will be the spoiler free video where I'll be talking about it more like a normal book, like normal people talk about books, giving information about plot, giving information about characters, talking about the title, you know, just like standard spoiler free stuff. That'll be in that video. However, because I know that people, that some people are a lot more spoiler sensitive with these secret projects because Sanderson presented it as an opportunity to just have it in your hands, start reading and know nothing. And a lot of people really love that concept and are excited about it. I wanna honor that too. So in this reading vlog, I'm not gonna talk about the title. I'm not gonna talk about the characters. I'm not gonna talk about the plot. I'm just going to tell you, did I like it? And that's it. So in this video, it's just vibes. 
Tuesday it's spoilers and Friday of next week it will be more details but still spoiler free. Are you gonna remember that? I don't know but I've given you the information. So I finished part one of Secret Project 3 and Just Vibes, I love it. I love it so much that I'm regretting doing only digital backing for the Kickstarter because while I can still buy it traditionally once it's available in the, in the standard publishing format, I won't ever have access to the beautiful edition. I know I'm getting too excited too quickly and this has, this has hurt me before, <laughs> but here I am. I'm really excited. I really like it. There you go. I'm gonna do a really quick check-in for Malazan because it feels horrible outside right now and my battery is about to die. So I finished part three of Malazan uh, book six, The Bone Hunters. So keeping it vague, keeping it quick. Oh my goodness, we are getting so much in this book. I feel like there's a lot of, in every Malazan book, there's a lot of real world implications, real world tie-ins, real world discussions that can be had based off of the things that are brought forth, but in section three, I feel like there's so many. Um, also, I'm seeing a lot of tie-ins in world of stuff that we saw in other books happen, and now we're seeing the ripples. I really love seeing that in my fantasy worlds where over a long stretch of time, you can, you can see major events that happen in previous books that are current, that are affecting current day things. So I'm seeing a lot of that and well, several instances of that in this section as well. We're getting big character reveals, big moments for some of my favorite characters, Ta Talaras and Kirtle. Some cool things happening with them as well as certain flashbacks, certain information on other characters, big action moments really really big hype moments as well as really devastating moments as well so much going on in this series so much going on in this book i'm just it's really good i was really hyped after part two because part two ended in such a way or no began it that was the beginning of part two wasn't it oh that's so crazy anyway part two was a lot so I was really, really, really excited about that. Um, now that I've come off the hype of part two and I'm in part three, I'm still having a great time, but Midnight Tides is still edge edging it out at the moment, though the ending of Malazan books are always so huge that we'll wait and see, but I will definitely have this finished next week and then I'll be working on getting my notes together for a review. So in July for sure, we will have our spoiler chat for Malazan. Uh, well, I have my calendar on the screen in the last check-in, so you can see where Bone Hunters is gonna be. So I'm definitely finishing this soon. I'm really excited. I have loved this book so much. There's a lot going on with it and I'm having a very, very good time. So anyway, it was a quick check-in, but there you go. Part three, done having a great time. Spoiler free, I'm gonna talk about Secret Project 3. Now, again, this is completely just vibes. How did I feel about it? Did I like it? If you want spoiler free, more normal kind of discussion, actually giving details about plot and stuff, that is coming. Again, that'll be in the new release vlog. I'm trying to accommodate for what each individual needs are going to be. So we have this one that's gonna be very, very completely spoiler free. We're gonna have the spoiler video, spoiler discussion on Tuesday, and then next Friday is spoiler free all in that new release vlog. So whatever you want 
it's all going to be available to you in about a week's time, all three options. And once Secret Project 3 is released out in the wild in traditional publishing manner, that's when Sanderson and his team are going to start using the name and the cover of the book. So that's when I will as well, because that's when it's officially declared time to use the name by Sanderson and his team. Just a warning to you, so you know. Anyway, how did I feel about the book? No information about it at all, except for how I felt about it. So good! So good! I don't know if I liked this or Tress more, actually. I want to, I want to hold back, I want to say I like this the most so far of all the secret projects. I loved Tress with a couple of nitpicks, a couple of minor, eh, I didn't really like that so much, but mostly I loved Tress. I was pretty let down by Handbook, the second secret project. It was one of my least favorite Sanderson's, if not my least favorite. Still some things to enjoy, but bummer, which had me kind of nervous about this one, but I might have liked this more than Tress. I, I don't want to, I don't want to overstate it, give me a couple days to process, but I might have liked it more than Tress. I've been vlogging my experience through reading this as well for that video that goes up on Friday of next week, so you'll get some more thoughts there as well as a spoiler video, but I, I have some complaints. There are specifically two things that I didn't, I didn't like in this book. One is kind of nitpicky and the other is more, more strong of a feeling. But even with those two things, I really, really liked this. It was a lot of fun. Is it the next Stormlight? Of course not. These secret projects were things that Sanderson wrote in his spare time for fun and decided to share with us. So it's not going to be your next epic, but it was really Fun, and it was something different from him. It was something really different while still totally still totally still having his voice It was a good time or rather his not his voice, but his his style the way he handles Certain things it's it still has Sanderson written all over it Also Dragon Ball. I have read volumes two and three. I'm actually reading volume four tonight But I want to get this vlog edited and up before I read that. So I'm going to have some panels on the screen, so treat this as a podcast for a minute. Don't look at the screen if you don't want to see any panels. Um, but yeah, so two more volumes. I'm now officially at the tournament, which I've been told by my patrons is when some of the less favorable things about this series slows down a little bit. Doesn't stop altogether, but slows down a little bit. So I'm looking forward to that. I really, really like a lot of that this series is doing. I love stupid humor. I love self-aware, intentionally dumb humor. And the way these characters act, the way they respond to things, the way something very catastrophic and huge will just be presented, will just be on page now, we're doing this now, and then gone as fast as it arrived. Like that chaotic nature is so fun to me. And we are sprinting through this series. I've been told that the anime is far slower paced as I, as I understand it, that's, that's kind of standard, but we're sprinting like eight months of training gone within a couple of chapters. And I love it because it kind of, it lends itself to, to the derpy style that some of this, uh, some of the narration is while also still being so cool. So many cool things are also happening. I love the way, uh, action, even though I haven't seen that much action, I love the way action is drawn in this. It's so clean and it's so fluid and it's just, I don't typically care for for fight scenes that much, either in books or in manga, but I really dig the way they're done in this so far, and I've only gotten a taste of them, but I'm really liking it. I also really hate the nasty old man. The guy that's training him, really hate him. Not a panel does he have that I enjoy. Which is unfortunate because his powers are so cool, and I'd like for them to interact with him for the sake of the story, but I'd like to never see him again. So obviously that's the biggest thing that's not landing for me in the series is absolutely everything wrapping around that one character. He just, he, oh, I don't like him and I don't like anything he has to say. Um, now that we're at the tournament as well, uh, I'm trying to speak vaguely so that, you know, it's a manga, it has a tournament. Are you surprised? So, you know, 
really trying to be vague, not saying anything major, but I'm only three volumes in, so there's not a lot major to say anyway. But now that we're at the tournament, um, there's some other humor that's coming up. I'm really, really not into gross humor, you know? And there's one fight that I just read that's very, um, smell related. Man is very stinky. He farts at you. He burps at you. And that makes the fight harder because you're so overwhelmed by your senses. And like, that's just not funny to me. But I will acknowledge that the main, that the, the target demographic for this series when it was written was, you know, adolescent boys who think farts are really funny. So for stuff like that, I have no problem with saying, okay, I don't think that's funny at all. But I also understand who this is aimed towards and why they do think it's funny. I don't feel that way about Nasty Old Man. So yeah, still very mixed on this series so far. I love so much of the humor and the chaotic nature of it, but I also hate so much of the humor. So there you go. That's, that's, that's my check-in. Because Secret Project 3 has taken up so much of my attention this week, I really haven't gotten much farther in um, Wall of Storms, so there's just no reason for me to update you again, but now that Secret Project is done, I will uh, put more more emphasis on that in the next vlog, so we'll talk about it a little bit more if you're interested, as well as we'll be finishing up Malazan next week, and I think I'm finishing Monster next week, too. I haven't been updating you in the vlogs, but Philip is going on a trip soon, and so we've been uh, we've been recording two discussions a week, but only publishing one discussion a week. So we're almost done <laughs> with the series, and I'm really excited to see how it ends because I was not high on it at the beginning, but it has it. I'm excited to see how it ends. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed what you read this week. Feel free to chat with me more about any of the books that I read in the comments if you like. I post videos every Tuesday and Thursday on this channel, Mondays and Fridays on my other channel. I'll see you again soon. Bye!